here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery with us is the owner, Ruthie Tucker, and we have wonderful, colorful art behind us of Neil Kerman. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about the artist? With pleasure. Crystal is a beautiful reflection of Neil Kerman's paintings. Neil Kerman is a Brooklyn-based artist who is known as a master colorist for his dazzling hues, rich textures, impasto, and really his vibrant palette that he mixes unusual colors to create hues that are colorific and really are resplendent for the universe. And we hope you'll all come to Amsterdam Whitney Gallery on 25th Street in the heart of Chelsea to see the magnificent work of Neil Kerman. And Neil Kerman Crystal also does something very interesting. He creates sticks, which uh, can be an exhibit uh, a multiple exhibit because these sticks can be created as horizontal, as vertical, they can be uh, rotating uh, uh, client's art, it could be placed on the side, it could be placed uh, uh, framing the art, it could be placed above, it could be placed underneath, they could be crisscrossed, and it makes it very versatile and very exciting. So it is our pleasure to welcome the art of Mr. Neil Kerman, a Brooklyn, New York based artist. You know, and, and talking about that diversity, he came originally from the business world, didn't he? From yes. healthcare. That's right. From and, healthcare. and so he has developed, uh, you know, as you said. Neil Kerman is also known for his um, uh, groundbreaking artistic work on Alzheimer's. He paints uh, visions of what an Alzheimer's patient would look at and view an artistic vision with clarity, then going into blurriness, and there's an acute sensitivity towards um, Alzheimer's and how it um, uh, metamorphs into a painting. It's very, very fascinating. And I think in October, which is Alzheimer's Month, it's important for us to all pause and consider the artistic vision of Neil Kerman. These are uh, a series of five paintings on the old city of Jerusalem, one of my favorite spots in the world. It is a holy center for three of the great uh, monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And each of these has uh, an orientation. This is the second station of the cross where Jesus takes up his cross. And that looks exactly like it did when Jesus walked there. They didn't change it. This isn't a tourist creation. This old city is there for every tourist who wants to go today. And the next painting is for uh, a Muslim audience. It's a minaret. And at the top of the minaret is uh, a uh, priest or a minister or imam uh, calling out uh, to call the faithful to prayer. And the next one is one of the most holy sites for uh, Judaism. It's the Western Wall. It's uh, where uh, people from all over the world come to place prayers in the cracks in the rocks. And in this particular one, it's a father in black and his son wearing a white shirt, and they're uh, studying prayers, maybe before the son has his bar mitzvah. The next one is uh, two uh, structures. It's the Western Wall, and this little fence separates the men from the women. The men pray on the left side and the women on the right side. They don't pray together. And in the background is the uh, Dome of the Rock, which is a holy site in Islam, but also a holy site for Judaism. And it's the al Aska Mosque. So there are two religions represented there, Judaism and Islam. And this next one is for our Christian friends, and it's the Via Della Rosa, the Walk of Pain, and it's one of the uh, buildings that was there when Christ walked by carrying the cross. The gold is, uh, it's working well for the old city of Jerusalem. Okay, from Toronto, Canada, we have Barbara Muir. We have all these beautiful blues, skies. You know, every time I see a sky, I think of your paintings. Wow, thank so, you. <laughs> so could you elaborate a little bit more with our audience? Uh, yes. Um, I am crazy about the landscape of Canada. And uh, this is the Maritimes. And same here. This year the fields really struck me as amazing. And, uh, and then this is Toronto, up, up, um, 
a, a park out behind the market we go to every Saturday. So I love the blues and uh, actually I love the yellows of the field too. So I try and express joy, try and bring joy to the world. Joy to the world, all the boys and girls. <laughs> And, and yes, this is a lot of nature, although you've, you've transitioned. I remember you had one exposition where you had all, all the girls, remember? I do uh, portraits, uh, uh, yes. Suntans. Yes. Look yes. at my suntan. Yeah. Uh, uh, from before, all the before the dance, yeah, <laughs> series. She had suntans from all different countries. I always, I yeah. thought that was very the amazing. The ocean series, the ocean, the ocean series. series. I've yes. always That's loved water, so I've been doing a lot featuring water when I did portraits too. But yeah. this is the nature in Canada. This is Can Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Welcome to thank Amsterdam, you, New York. And thank you so much, Crystal. Thank you. I love seeing you. All these wonderful flowers behind me. Nancy Balmert from, uh, where are you from? Uh, Houston, Texas, and Seattle, Washington. Oh, well, yes. welcome to Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Thank you. Happy to be here. Now, I love, I love these paintings. Tell me a little bit more. I mean, wonderful flowers and colorful and fun. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I love painting flowers. Um, I think they bring the outside indoors. And just to me, it just feels good to, to um, have the flowers inside the house. So when we were in the U.K., um, this past May, for our 44th wedding anniversary, I took a picture of this rose. It was at Castle Combe. And we've traveled, and I take pictures when we travel. So there's a story behind each flower of where I took the photo of. Well, this and, one right behind me. Where's, where's that from? Yes, okay, that is a dahlia. And I took that photo from Bouchard Gardens in Victoria, BC, and every summer we take the float plane over and stay there and do uh, about 2,000 photos of flowers. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. a lot of photos. <laughs> yeah, and so that came from there. And then behind us? Uh, this one actually came from Scotland, and it's a orange balls, uh, calendula is the name of the flower, and... I just thought it looked really pretty. I loved the color of it. Scotland uh, itself. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> it's a wonderful trip. Yes, it, it was a very wonderful trip. <laughs> <laughs> and then we yeah. have one in the far corner. Tell us a little bit about that, okay. where, where that originated from. That's, this is a creative idea, is to, is to take photographs of flowers in different countries. <gasps> yes, yes. Everywhere I go, I'm taking pictures of flowers. So, yeah. And the, and the last one? It is Summer Night Rose. And that one actually was used on Amsterdam Whitney's invitation and was sold on its way here while it was in transit from Texas to New York. And so that one um, already sold. And where was it uh, photographed at? Um, Portland, Oregon. In Portland, Oregon. My brother took me to the Festival of, Festival of Roses in Portland, Oregon. And I took umpteen photos of beautiful roses. And this is uh, one of theirs. With this is Sally Ruddy, and this series is called Thinking Pink. So tell me how you came up with uh, this vision. Well, I started with this piece, and it was just going to be a cat in some green leaves. But I started playing with the background color that I'd put this pink in just went, gosh, I really love this pink. And I was just playing and having fun, and I made up the whole thing. And when I was finished, I went, wow, I was really thinking pink. <laughs> so I named the piece that. But funny thing is, when it was done, I looked at his eyes and realized I didn't give him cat eyes. Cats, is that your cat, by the way? No. Oh, just a cat. No, just okay. a cat. But cats, the pupil in their eye goes up and down. And he has little round pupils like a human. And I decided just to leave it like a little mystery. But um, because of that, you can say, who's thinking pink? Is it the cat? Is it the viewer? Or was it me? <laughs> and then when I did the entire series of work to get ready for this exhibit, 
I was quite surprised at how many pinks were running through all the pieces. And I thought, gosh, I really was thinking pink. So I titled the series that. And it's a playful title, but the works are very tender. And, you know, I'm so much of a nature lover. And this is my personal home where I live in California. This is called Almond Splendor. And I live in the Central Valley in California on a ranch. And in the springtime, there are literally thousands and thousands of acres of almonds blooming. And we say almond in California, but you say almond. Um, but when they bloom, it's just like a dream. They're white blossoms, and they last for a few weeks. When they're done, they flutter to the ground and make a snow carpet on the ground. And then they're done. The trees turn green and it's all gone. And the, the air when they're blooming is just heady with pollen and bees. But, um, so that's called Almond Splendor. And then the next piece is a water lily. And I used little bits of metallic gold to flicker on the leaves, kind of like the sunlight sparkling on the water. And again, it was pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's pink. Then we have thinking pink. Yes. And the pink oh, house. Oh, we have a, we have a pink the little pink house. house. The pink house. The pink house. We're in the pink. We're in the pink. When I was, would drive my road, Highway 132, many years I've lived there, never ever saw this house. One day, it was there. And I said, oh my gosh, there's a pink house there. What happened was they took down their orchard and it had been wow. hidden for years. It had been hidden by trees, so almonds. And they um, have now replanted, so it's going to disappear again. And I thought, I've got to paint that pink house before it's gone. This one is called White is a Barn and it's a barn right near my home. And um, it actually, the true colors of the barn, it's very, very old and dark and faded. But I decided to bring it back to life by making it more honey golden and making the wood seem newer and letting the flowers bloom and give it life. Another barn. It Another looks like. barn right near where I live and drive. This one is called Lonesome. It was a gray, kind of wintry day, foggy, and um, I love silhouettes. So the little trees in the background reminded me of that jewelry. I'm giving my age here, but when I was a little girl, we used to get jewelry that had a little black silhouette of a tree or a mountain or something um, against a colored background. And that's what the silhouettes remind me of that. And then the last one is called Owl Box Number Two. I painted a smaller version that's number one that we didn't have room for. But that's on my property. I can see it out my window. And the owls live there. They house their babies there, but I never see them. I can hear them, you know, hoo hooing, um, but we never see them. So it's like a little mystery. From Germany, Angela. Ang Angelika Gerleit. Angelica. Angelica. Yeah. Uh, Angelica, some of your work is behind me. Tell me a little bit about it. Looks uh, some cities, or yeah. tell us. Tell me about your work. Um, I have different works, uh, and um, um, here we see skylines. I uh, have uh, all skylines. Uh, from all, all over the world. I came from Hamburg and I have to draw. Um, and I like to be in uh, New York and I have to draw, but it's not here. Um, and uh, all over the world. The uh, big city in uh, Germany is uh, Berlin and it's here. And uh, for me, it's important to um, present 
different artworks I make. And uh, I'm very glad uh, that Ruthie had, she said, uh, make another and I take another, that's a golden boy, it's a, a completely different work to the skyline. Well, that's a, that's a unique skylines, actually. That's unique to travel the world, yeah. take photographs of skylines, uh, and then paint them. No, I, I didn't like skyline. Uh, it's uh, completely boring for me. Uh, I make my own. And I like to travel. And uh, in, in my head, I say I want uh, to go and um, to visit New York. And I want to have a vernissage in New York. And here I am. That's the reason for the skylines. Well, welcome to New York. And we have a brilliant skyline. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We have the work here of Steve Kaufman and representing him. Diana Vashir. Okay. Now this first picture I see a lot of colors and... Oh, yeah. and well, yeah, Steve was a pop artist. Uh, he uh, grew up in the Bronx, went to School of Visual Arts, and there he met uh, Andy Warhol. And he assisted Andy Warhol for a while, and he learned the artist silk screening and... Uh, and he carried through most of his most of his life, except he took it forward even more forward by adding more colors and very happy art and capturing American icons. That tomato can. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's, I know, that's one I know. Of the famous, famous yeah. shot. And the Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. Yes. We've been exhibiting his art in Europe for the past uh, years. Steve died in 2010. He was very young, only 49 years old. Uh, I worked with him from 1999 until he passed. So I took over his exhibit exhibiting and uh, museum placements. Um, it's been great. I mean, we've been touring Europe, and European embraced him. They really love. We placed a lot of his art in museums there. And then we thought, okay, it's time to bring him home. So he's home and he's at Amsterdam Whitney. Yeah, now from yes, this, that's right. In the far right. corner we have the Statue of Liberty. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he captured icons. He loved uh, America. Was He loved everything American. You know, here, this painting here, it's, it's like everyone could relate to it because everybody knows these are famous icons. This is America. And then we have right no. here... Marilyn was his favorite, one of his favorite uh, subjects to paint. He just adored her. That's a gorgeous outfit she has on. Yeah, she was, uh, well, I don't think there's anyone in the world who doesn't know the name Marilyn. It's like Coca-Cola, you know? Anywhere in the world you go, you say Coca-Cola or Marilyn, they know, you know? And then we have over here also... New York, New York, Frank Sinatra, right? Painting. Tina um, Sinatra commissioned Steve to paint a series of paintings for of her father when he was alive. Uh, so he did a whole series of the paintings, and then she went on uh, Larry King show. She was interviewed, and in the background were all the paintings that he did of her father. It was really nice. He's worked with a lot of uh, celebrities. Warner Brothers hired him to do art for their stores back then when they had stores throughout the country. Uh, Muhammad Ali he worked with. He was commissioned by Muhammad Ali. Uh, Hugh Hefner, he, was in, he, li he lived in LA. So that whole LA crowd, they all commissioned him to, they loved his art because it really popped. Uh, he worked with John Travolta. But he also did a, a tremendous amount of charity work. He had his own charity called Give Kids a Break, where a, a huge percentage of the sales went to this charity, where he would hire kids straight out of prison and put them to work in the studio. So, a great artist and a great humanitarian. My theme is the, life pro, uh, the process of, of life. Um, and uh, every painting has a story. Uh, and I start in a color chaos, and then I model the painting into a story. 
right? Yeah. Well, the story over here. Yeah, it's called the process. The process. Yes. And how did that story come about? Uh, it's uh, the meeting with yourself. Yeah, in different uh, shapes. Uh, the one you like and uh, the and one side. Like. Yeah. And we know both of them. Yeah. And uh, in the yellow ring, you are uh, working with yourself and coming up in a new shape. So uh, it's a work in progress the whole life. Right behind. Yeah, this is called the power of thought. Uh, it's uh, maybe a person who's uh, meditating and here's a heavy thought. And here's a bird who's lifting up the heavy thought. And uh, here you can see a seed and it's uh, growing up uh, as a new thought. And the uh, sky is blue all over. This uh, two painting has a, a unique story. Uh, uh, both was uh, painting two months before uh, Donald Trump won uh, the election. And uh, the other one is uh, Magnus Carlsen who won the chess world championship, both in New York. So he won with the, the white uh, queen sacrifice. Uh, and uh, the Donna one, uh, it's uh, called What's Your Brand? So when you're point, pointing at someone, it's always three fingers back. Yeah. So what's your brand? <laughs> All the way from Romania, Miss C. Such, you give your art name. <laughs> Miss C, hello everyone. <laughs> and you know, I, I see women and faces, and just, just tell us about your work. My work is generally inspired by uh, my own life and my own interaction with people. And, uh, I'm coming from Romania, so it's a different culture than the American one. And you see women in most of my paintings because I try to focus on the woman's uh, development and life, her career path, her personal self-growth. And behind us, we have well, lipstick and... Tell me, tell me uh, what inspired that, that painting. Uh, so this painting right here, it's called All in One, uh, which basically represents one woman that can be every other woman. You know, uh, they say that the woman can be challenged and be insecure by a man who sees other women differently. But a woman doesn't know, she can be all of them and even more. That's why the painting is called All in One. Because a woman can actually be the goddess <laughs> of all the other women and of a man as well. Then behind, uh, we have a, looks another woman and is, is and that the, a man? And the man, yes. Uh -huh. So this one is called Genesis. It's inspired by uh, the yin and yang sign, and this is the genesis of love. It's uh, the way and the hope that there is uh, actually the best and perfect half for a man and a woman. So this <laughs> represents the yin and yang of love. Oh, that's positive. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, your last one there. The last one there, it's called uh, Leaving the Past Behind. Of course, there's a woman there. Yes, is she, is she going over a bridge or...? or she's, uh, she's climbing a stairs. Stair. Okay. Stairs, And yes. she's going, obviously, to a different place than the one below. The boxes represent her past. So she's leaving the past behind and she's going through a different level of her life, climbing all the way and the stair is purposely made with cracks. Because at the beginning, you know, she has a heart way to go through it, but she becomes stronger and she goes obviously to a different place. And the boxes represent the past. The world of sculpture. We have Mauricio Sorio from Mexico and we have this first piece and tell us uh, a, a little bit about uh, the concept. Give us a little bit of the concept of this piece. Me gusta mucho el, el arte abstracto, el arte moderno y me gusta mucho esta pieza en particular, es un toro y el color le da mucha intensidad. I, I really like uh, to create like abstract works, like abstract uh, a bull, this is a bull, and 
and basically what I did is that um, I, I, I choose the red color to like intensify like uh, the animal. Es una pieza en bronce, es una pieza emblemática de mi trabajo, que es movimiento suave, y, y es una mujer, es una, es una mujer mirando hacia el horizonte. This is an emblematic piece of my work, it's called Horizon, it's made out of bronze, and it's a woman that is looking at the horizon, it's like pointing at the sunset maybe, it's, it's trying like to give like to, to make people think like what is this woman watching, you know, that's what I wanted to create. It has like smooth movement. Uh, you cannot really see the face or the hair of the of the of the woman, but I mean, you can tell it's a person watching the horizon, right? So it's kind of like abstracting that kind of movement into that, like pointing at something. This is like the three pieces we are presenting at the Amsterdam Whitney Gallery are pieces uh, that are in, in scale, in a lower scale. So these pieces are or, like originally in much bigger scales, you know. So. It kind of like they look nice, but I mean, they're, they're like really big pieces. So you you could imagine this like a gigantic woman watching at the horizon, you know? Yes. Yes. I, I, I you understand? You yes. Yeah. So this is like uh, the the man, the wife, and the and the two daughters of a family. In Mexico, we have like this thing that like, we are very like family values, and we don't kick or we don't kick like the kids out of the house when they turn in 18. Like you know, it's like very like. You can, this is your house, you can be, like, stay here as long as you're like, very responsible, right? And, and this is a, a, another like, scale piece. This is a, a piece that is, has like three meters, so like 10 feet. Uh, and it's located in a golf course in Mexico uh, at the gardens of the golf course. So, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. So you can maybe imagine the scale of the piece. Um, it also like connects, links with the smooth movement of the lines, like, getting together at the same point um, and yeah I like to think that uh, the ground, the basement does like the family values that put all the family together. We're here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. We're ready to say goodnight but first the artists. We have Nancy Bolmert, Sally Ruddy, Angelica Gerleit, Diana Bashir representing Steve Kaufman. Ruthie Tucker, the owner of Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. Thank you, gorgeous Crystal. <laughs> Thank you, we love you. Mauricio Sori, escultor. Christina Curescu. Anna Margaret. John Peters. So say good night, everyone. Hey, night night. <laughs> good night. Hey, thank you from Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Come visit down in Chelsea. Good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>